Okay, now obviously you can play whatever game you want. And if you enjoy a game or not is a very subjective experience that can vary a lot from one person to another. And that's more than just fine. There are some games, however, that looking at the bigger picture do one thing or another really well and often have a huge impact on gaming culture in general. So if you like to talk about games or if you're a game developer yourself, you might at least want to take a look at those games. My list is by no means exhaustive and there are definitely a lot more titles that fit those criteria but those are the first ones that popped into my head. Maybe if you like this kind of video, I will make a second part, since just in the time I was writing the script for this video, I could already think of three more games to talk about. So hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment to let me know which games I missed. Or just tell me something funny about your cat. I guess that's fine as well. I am starting with a game that I am probably quite biased about since it is the first game that got me into playing video games in general. Like I played games before but I wasn't into video games. Before Ocarina of Time I never really wanted a game. If I got one, okay, if I didn't, whatever. It wasn't even the first time that I saw a game in 3D, but it was the first time that I experienced a proper story in 3D. Games like Mario 64 or Crash Bandicoot always seemed more like a theme park to me. I was always just like on one attraction or the other and I never was able to forget that I am actually playing a video game, while Zelda was able to totally immerse me into the game world. I was living Link's story and I was even making up my own stories about the game. I don't know how much time I spent just aimlessly running through 3D polygon Hyrule. Now I guess there are a lot of games that rely on this kind of narrative immersion to captivate players, but I always come back to Zelda because I actually think Nintendo does a really good job of providing this experience and at the same time providing a very fluent and kind of timeless gameplay. You can still play Ocarina of Time today and it is mostly fine, you might maybe be a little bit annoyed by the camera, but that's a about it. And I'm definitely not the only one who felt this way, since there are so many players and even game developers who quote Ocarina of Time as one as their main inspirations. The game does a really great job at designing 3D dungeons, and I just love the typical Zelda progression system, which is kind of different from the more RPG-like leveling that we've seen in so many titles. If I had to think about any game that I would call timeless, it would probably be Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Timeless. Although there are some aspects that at closer look I am not that excited about, like the whole time travel aspect. Luckily there are other games that have an even better take on that specific point. Braid is a 2D game made by Jonathan Blow, who before he made the game worked in different positions in the IT and software industry. It soon got a variety of prices and somehow landed on Xbox Live, which was before the time where putting a game onto Steam was just a matter of filling out a few online forms. But Braid did not just change how people looked at Jonathan Blow, it also changed how people looked at indie games in general. Up until then, indie games were just a niche hobby for some very passionate individuals, or seen as a kind of demo project for developers to jump into a position at a bigger company. But Braid was celebrated in such big circles and had such a huge success with all kinds of audiences that the the whole indie game scene got a huge attention boost. It was suddenly quite common for video game lovers to browse indie titles, and with developer access to Steam getting easier and easier, they got more and more to choose from. And look at us now, we have a whole culture with festivals and everything around indie games. I admit this is probably not everything just because of Braid and there was an indie scene even before that, but I do think that the effect that this game and its critical acclaim had on the whole industry should not be taken lightly. And even if that wasn't the case, Braid did not get all of its praise for nothing. It's a very thoughtfully designed experience. And while definitely not the first game that plays with the time rewind function, it is the first game that feels like it takes this mechanic seriously and treats it like more than just a hand gimmick. And I think that alone is a reason why everyone should have at least tried this game. Another game that plays with time travel mechanics is Life is Strange, although it takes a little bit of a different route than Braid did. While Braid is a video game through and through, Life is Strange tries to kind of bridge the gap between video games and television in a way. It focuses very strongly on a beautiful narrative, structures itself in episodes, and 
truth be told, it would not be out of place as a teenage slice of life TV show. But while this is the case, it actually enhances the experience and in my opinion also the immersion by adding interactive elements. And not just any interactive elements, but specifically mechanics that work perfectly with the story and the general theme of the game. And the choice of music is just incredible. Seriously, if you're looking for a melancholy indie rock playlist, find the soundtrack for the first Life is Strange game. I would still play that up and down if I ever had the time to take like a long drive out for a camping vacation or something like that. Life is Strange does not push the limits of the medium in the way that Braid did, but only takes the elements that it needs to enhance its own experience. Which I think is great, because it shows that there is more than just one valid way to work with gameplay and mechanics, and that different variations can still lead to different but very entertaining outcomes. Unfortunately, I think that the successors of Life is Strange were so far not able to repeat its success. While they are not bad games per se, I would not put them on the same pedestal as the first Life is Strange. Hideo Kojima made a name for himself as a game design auteur. Many people think of him if they think about games as an art form, because he very much sees them as that, or at least that's the way he likes to present himself. The game that he owes this success to is most definitely Metal Gear Solid, which is not the first game in the Metal Gear series, but the one that moved it from the just another adventure shooter shelf to a shelf that at the time was still completely empty. The game basically built its own shelf. Kojima was not really a fan of excessive violence in games and never really liked games that, in his opinion, glorified violence, shooting and war. So when he had to basically make a gunslinging action game, he tried to add some twists to it. Ammunition in that game was generally quite rare, which encourages players to avoid confrontation if possible, which makes the game more about hiding and running away unseen. Basically what you think about nowadays if you talk about stealth mechanics. However, Kojima added many more other aspects that made the game, holistically speaking, an experience that was quite unique at the time and is still very intriguing today. Metal Gear Solid was fully voice acted, which was not something that was done very often at a time where audio files still took up a lot of valuable space on a game disc. And some of the boss mechanics were just so incredibly genius that I don't know if you would even be able to replicate it today. Seriously, if you know what I'm talking about, tell me in the comments how long it took you to figure out how to defeat Psycho Mantis. When I first played the original Dark Souls, I told people I like it because it is like Zelda, but for grown-ups. And it's true that Dark Souls takes a lot of inspiration from The Legend of Zelda. The game designer, Hidetaka Miyazaki, even admits that Ocarina of Time was a big influence on the game and all of his work in general. You can definitely see parallels in the way he structures and interlinks the game world, as well as the basic setup of the narrative and the environment. A number of big bosses in their own areas, then one big change, and some more bosses until you get to the final confrontation. However, Dark Souls was able to do so much more and was able to something that not many games achieve. It birthed its own genre. Souls likes are a whole subcategory of video games nowadays. And there are even creators here on YouTube who specialize on making content on video games that are quite similar to Dark Souls. The gameplay of Dark Souls was challenging, but still fair. It could be frustrating at times, but more often than not, it was quite obvious what you had to do to win an encounter. The challenge was just to executed properly. Losing or dying in Dark Souls was not seen as a failure, but a part of the experience. And Miyazaki and his team beautifully integrated this ideology into the narrative of the game. Not only can you progress, but you can progress in a variety of ways, making even additional playthroughs of the game a new and refreshing experience. And man, I could talk hours about the storytelling and the narrative. I admit that Dark Souls' approach to this is not for everyone. Some people like their story clearly laid out and presented so that they can easily follow it without having to think much. And that is a perfectly valid preference. I too have my times where I just wanted to lay back and have some story sprinkle on me while I relax. But I also love to figure out things by myself and put together a 
puzzle out of ideas and small things in the game that I might not have thought about before. And Dark Souls does just an amazing job at this kind of environmental storytelling that hides little hints to larger stories in assets, item descriptions and even promo artwork. And I think a lot of other people enjoy that as well. FromSoft made a lot of great games, but I would say Dark Souls is the most accessible one, maybe apart from Elden Ring, and definitely a good entry point into the world of games where you just have to get good. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed the video and you know what comes next. Press the like button if you like it, subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date and leave a comment to say hi, tell me how bad my hair looked today or just maybe tell me about your day. YouTube loves that, but I actually do too. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and See you in the next video. Bye bye.